What's up, my friend? Today I'll be reacting to the man with no legal identity of the grid in Appalachia. This should be a fascinating one. One hour video, so I will try to not pause too much, but you guys have been enjoying this long format quite a lot, so I hope this is also uh, a good one. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like, thank you so much, my friend. This is the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well, in that case, forget about it. You make my day, have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description, Peter Santanello, amazing, amazing channel. Give him some love. That said, let's play it. I don't have any form of identification, no driver's license, no ID, nothing like that. I have no clue what happened to Titus. He took off somewhere out there. <laughs> I wake up in the morning and there's a green hill on that side, and a green hill on that side, and I just have my own little peaceful valley here. On this friend. We can accept and still go on with what we've got. This is your whole uh, dishwashing apparatus? I think that's the beauty. We can hang out today. We don't have to believe in exactly the same thing, and we can have an awesome time. This See? is your McDonald's drive-up window? Yep. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Titus. Hey. You ever had a cell phone? Never did. Do you feel like you're missing out on anything right now? That's like childhood. Oh, wow. I think I may... You know what, my friends? I'm having a feeling this will be an amazing, amazing one. Okay. Go like into that tree, okay, and then see if I can bend it to this one and get to this one and then come over to that one. Okay, then, no chance. Bam. Oh man, maybe you've done this a few times, Titus. Oh, yeah, we didn't have TV growing up, so oh my god, uh, the real Tarzan lives in America. We did for, wow. You know, our spare time, and I still do it for fun. I'm gonna see if I can make it to this other tree here. Jeez. What? Trying to get to this other tree. <laughs> I think I'm in a Oh, ride this guy's amazing. <laughs> that was fantastic. I think you got some stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long have you been out here? I've been on this farm. This would be the eighth, the eighth summer. Did you I've grow up here. like this? Well, we did grow up growing our own firewood or cutting our own firewood. We never had like electric heat or anything, but uh, like my parents have computers, electricity, that kind of things. And I just felt like God was calling me to live a more simple life, oh. more at peace and more with nature. So okay. I don't have like electricity or running water. I do have running water if I put it in a bucket and run with it, and it runs through the creek, too. <laughs> How much land are you living on here? I've got 50 acres. About 20 is open, like pasture or garden land. Okay. And about 30 is woods. That's a lot, right? Come inside. Like, I'm single and I'm busy working outside, and so it's, it's real disorganized. Uh, You're a bachelor. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And my buddy is staying with me, too, and he's got some of his stuff stored here. Okay. Uh, so you in... do a lot of canning of yeah, things? Yeah, I do some canning, yeah. This is the wood cook stove here, uh, which during the summertime I'm not using it uh, since it would get too hot in here. So you have mm. no electricity in here? No, which it is wired for, like, the... So my grandpa, uh, not grandpa, grandmother, actually had one of those, and yeah, it gets very hot. Electric was on when I bought it, but I, I've been here... This is the eighth summer, and I've, I've not not had any electricity here. So why do you choose for no electricity? Well, uh, it gives me like a freedom to not have to be down to a grind of a, like a nine to five job. I don't have an internet bill. Uh, I don't have all these bills, you know, associated with that with electricity, and so I can just just work a small amount, whatever I want to work, and and then I have enough money to live. Okay, what are you doing for work? I train horses and shoe horses. Oh, cool. Yeah. So what do you think your hey. expenditures are? How much money do you think you have to... You know what? Uh, look, my life is nothing like his life. But I find this fascinating because uh, when we see people that are doing... That are living such different lives... I, I, do you guys find that fascinating? I, I find that fa fa fascinating, right? Uh, oh, this will be a crazy video, my friends. To spend a month. Uh, I guess probably my, my two main bills would be like dog food. 
and mm. like my phone bill, I've got a landline phone. So, landline, no cell phone. Yeah, no cell phone. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Like they wouldn't. I didn't want the internet, but they wouldn't give me. They wouldn't give me a phone without the internet. So I don't. I'm paying for internet, but I don't get it. So I have a landline phone, and that's like ninety dollars a month. Uh, and then dog food, I probably spend like twenty dollars a month on dog food or something. Things like salt, fruit, and things like that, I probably spend like. Thirty dollars a month on that, probably. So ninety twenty. Oh man, but the the phone bill is big, for 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 his way of living, right, my friends? Twenty and thirty. Yeah. So one forty a month is your your mm -hmm. expenditures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always dreamed of having my own farm, my own land, and a dream finally came true. <laughs> you love it? I do. I wake up in the morning and there's a green hill on that side and a green hill on that side, and I uh -huh. just have my own little. Peaceful Valley here. It's tremendous. I love so this no guy car. already. No. Nope. You get around with carriage. Yep. So you're almost living an Amish lifestyle. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. But you're not at all. No, I'm not a member, no. I'm not, I'm not a member of the Amish church, but I pretty well live the lifestyle. Okay. You want some banana peels? Nothing goes to waste. I saw some uh, documentaries about Amish uh, communities. Quite fascinating. This is Greatheart. Greatheart? Yes, that's his name. That looks bad, Titus, <laughs> putting that in the bar. <laughs> like, you, see, you don't seem like you're uh, unhappy, so. Uh, no, I, I, I um, sometimes take up hay, bales of hay up in here, and I'll, okay. I'll uh, loop this around and snap it. But um, this is the way that I get up into my barn loft to get hay. Whoa. <laughs> You need to be strong, by the way. Titus, let me give you this and uh, okay. show what's up there. <laughs> All right. Wait, here we go. Got it. The, am I holding it right? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I got some hay up here, uh, first cutting of hay. You were telling me off camera you sleep up there on summer nights, right? Yeah, sometimes it gets really hot in the trailer. And so I'll come up here. Uh, in the hay and it's like a there's peter down there <laughs> my friend uh, isaac was staying with me and he was sleeping up here in the barn and he said uh this this hay ba sleeping on these hay bales it's an eco-friendly green biodegradable mattress <laughs> and it smells good to top it off i believe it <laughs> go out to the front and i'll show you the funnest way to get out of the barn all right Titus, you're a character. <laughs> All right, what's Titus got for us here? You gonna jump out of there? I'll show you the funnest way to get out of the barn. <laughs> oh my God, There's okay. Titus. We are what, six minutes in into the video. This is already a fascinating one. I'm having so much fun. You guys are going to be recommending this one a lot by Peter Centinello. And I was like, I'm not even sure what is this, but uh, oh, this is a good one, my friends. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, nice. These are orga organic potatoes. Mm. Okay, so y you don't use any chemicals, huh? Nope. I just spread manure from the horses here and then plowed it under and then... Uh, waited a while and then planted the potatoes. So you're getting zero processed foods, huh? I was like 14 years old, 13, 14 years old, and I was over at a neighbor's house shoeing some horses. And uh, they said, hey, you want a pop? I said, uh, I, or they asked me, do you like pop? I said, uh, I don't, I don't, I've never had it. They're like, what? You've never had pop? I said, no. Uh, they said, well, you want to try it? And I said, sure. So I tried, I tried one and that was enough for the rest of my life. I didn't like it. And I just, it was what, one Coca-Cola? It was like a orange crush. You hated it. It just, uh, uh, and that, my dad, he built a, helped build. I mean, in reality, he's not losing anything. Uh, we drink that all the time, right? But uh, we know that's not good for us. So, I mean, good, good on him. Well, they, um, a plant where they produce the Coca-Cola. Uh -huh. And he said if they had a spill, it would etch the concrete. It just eat away at the finish on the concrete. So if it if it does that concrete, what is it going to do to your bones? It's kind of like golfing. 
except for uh, you hit the ball every time. <laughs> you know what I was, uh, uh, this is a bit out of, <laughs> I mean, it's hard to do the video, but not. When I was a kid, there was uh, cartoons, uh, Tom Sawyer. Do, uh, do you guys know Tom Sawyer in America? I believe so, right? Uh, kind of remembers me a bit, no? <laughs> Let me grab a few. So this is for supper? Yes. Yep. Titus, I know there are a lot of ticks out here, but you don't worry about them at all, huh? I just pick them off if they get on me. Here's some purple well. onions. <laughs> We're going to cook those. This is your whole uh, dishwashing apparatus? Yeah. Maybe he's vegan, actually. Yeah, I wash, uh, wash produce and dishes down here. So you set this little barrier up here just to let the right amount of water in, huh? Yeah, my buddy Isaac did. Uh, I, take, I usually take a bath up in there. You take a bath up there? Yep. And so that acts a little bit like a filter, huh? Yeah, it's got some sand and gravel and stuff, yeah. Uh, so having this behind your house is key, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to have plenty, this for this lifestyle, huh? Having plenty of water, yeah. I don't have to have electricity to pump it. It's just right here. Let's see nighting. Do you ever get sick with anything? I've gotten colds, I've gotten flus. Like the past year, I've not been sick at all. Like not even a cold, not even a stuffy nose, nothing. My thought is eat lots of healthy food, breathe deep of fresh air, trust in God, uh, get your exercise, and do things that strengthen your immune system so then your immune system is strong enough that it can just fight off whatever virus is out there. I mean, he seems very healthy. Is this one of your classic meals? Yeah, that's uh, red potatoes, uh, purple onions, and then kale. And then I'll put a little bit of uh, pink Himalayan salt in there. And we'll put some water in there. And then we'll put it on the stove and let it cook. And then later today, Peter and I will come and have a feast. Yeah, Titus. And it's got the tightest touch <laughs> from the source. <laughs> we'll put a little bit more wood in here to some of this cedar that we cut earlier. How far away are your parents? My parents about eight miles from here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you like going over there to visit? I do. Yeah. This is truth here. She's uh, being affectionate. <laughs> so when you go to your parents, do you love the conveniences? Because they have electricity and everything, right? Yeah. Uh, is, it, is there a temptation in that? No, I don't really. Like, I enjoy being there and enjoy, you know, hanging out with my parents. But as far as the electricity or whatever, I don't really miss it. I guess the, probably the only thing that I miss is... Uh, like living without electricity is a refrigerator. A refrigerator is just mm. so empty. <laughs> I think this is a great point. If you really think about uh, everything you have at home that you'd miss a lot, uh, is probably the, the fridge. Um, but uh, why is the title The Man With No Legal Identity? Actually, that's what I mean. I mean, he's part of. He's a US uh, citizen, right? But I, I can put stuff in the creek and it'll keep overnight. Like if I have beans left over or something, I could put them in a pot in the creek and they'll, they'll stay good overnight. Of course, during the, during the winter time, I've got a room in the back that I, I keep, uh, uh, I just keep the door shut so the heat doesn't go in there. And that's basically like a refrigerator during the yep. winter. That's time. a good point. No GMO, no herbicides, no pesticides, all organic. No Monsanto out here? No Monsanto, not for me. I do, there are neighbors that are a few miles away that have Roundup Ready corn and soybeans. From what I've heard, they have developed a seed and they put a, they spliced a gene into it to where it terminates, so it's just good for one season. 
Mm. Why? So you have to buy more, or how mm -hmm. does that work? Yeah, so you're dependent upon them. If you plant this stuff in, out in your in your soil, if you were to spray it with Roundup, it'd kill it. But that the Monsanto seed, they've got corn and soybeans that are Roundup ready, so you can plant them in your field, and then you can spray a herbicide, and that kills all the weeds, but it won't hurt your corn. So that's just easier to farm. Mm -hmm. Then with your garden, you have to pull the weeds or what? Yeah, pull weeds or hoe them, or uh, like that cultivator that the horses pull. You take that through your, through your rows and it kills the weeds when they're really small. <laughs> kind of a peaceful sound. It is, I like it. It's sort of therapeutic, huh? Yeah, it's it like, is. It's like raking sand or something. Yeah. It's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> That's a beautiful Back. horse. Back. If I'm at peace and I'm right with God, I have his peace in my heart, then the horses are going to have it too. They feel your energy completely. Definitely. It's just like attitude. I mean, when you're around somebody, there are some people that are like cheerful, they're, they're positive, and you feel like, oh, I want to spend time with that guy. Or I, I think that's true, my friends. I think uh, when you meet someone that is super positive, there is something about that person that, uh, you know, makes also you positive because he, he, you can't have to match their energy. Do you guys agree? And if that's why I, when I know people that are very negative, I try to keep them away because I know I also can become ne very negative. Do you, do you guys agree with that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with, with, with this uh, stuff a lot. I want to spend time with that person. And there's other people that they're really negative and you think, man, get out, let's get out of here. Like, like, you know, I want to be polite, but I'd, I'd rather not spend a lot of time with, you know, that's true. and I believe in animals are the same. If you know, if you have God's peace in your heart and you're calm, then the animals will want to be in your presence. They'll want to be with you. You can rod shotgun. So where are we going, Titus? We are gonna go to a. Uh, yeah, that's broken. That, that's good. Yeah. Okay. A uh, friend of mine, Amish friend of mine that makes harness and. Amish friend. Work. Reuben Schroyer, he lost his hand in a sawmill accident. Oh. But it's amazing the workmanship that he can do with one good hand and a hook in the other. Your dog's coming too? Yeah, the old one there, Spartacus, he may not, he's kind of slow and getting old, he may not go a whole way, but Sadie there, she'll run along. That's nice, nice little breeze. Yeah, huh? it feels good. How good does that feel? It feels good. Come and on. do the horses like doing this, do you think? They like working. You know. How amazing is this, my friends? Oh, I I would love to meet that guy, you know, and do a video for YouTube like Peter Santanello did. But yeah, I'm not as famous as Peter Santanello. That's it. I, this seems so, so fun. There's times when we may feel like just laying in bed all day or you know, like not doing anything, but once you accomplish some useful work, there's a sense of satisfaction that you think, right. wow, a job well done, you know. I think it's the same way with the horse. They plow that field there and we plant corn and then later they get to eat it when the snow flies. <laughs> or it's hot and sweaty and they're mowing hay. That's hard work, but when right. the snow flies, they've got something yummy to munch on in the, in the barn. Do you have a girlfriend? No, I'm single. Do you want a girlfriend? Yeah, we have to work on that because this guy deserves a, girl, a girlfriend. Do you guys agree? I mean, this is a tremendous man. Come on. I do. Yeah. You do? It's going to have to be the right woman that's going to love this lifestyle, right? Definitely. Because you're not... Yeah, you have to pick a, a good woman because we cannot let this uh, amazing soul get contaminated. Is that the word? Contaminated, sorry. <laughs> no, we have to pick the, a, a great, great woman. Moving to Atlanta, are you? No, no. I just, I don't, I don't like being in cities. Like there's been times when God told me to go preach in a city and I've, I've gone for that. But as soon as I can get out of there, I'm out. 
Oh boy. So you is there. He likes you, huh, Titus? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Beautiful countryside out here. It is. It is. So do you feel like you're missing out on anything right now? Living no. out here. Is there any like one little thing that you're like, ah? Let me just Google what is Appalachia. Uh, no, I feel like the people that are in the city are definitely missing out. They're missing out on the peace and the fresh air here. I mean, it does look like a romantic lifestyle in the sense that you're living very simply and you're connected with nature. But to do it, most people can't hack it out. I wouldn't be able to hack it out. I mean, if I had to, I would, I could, but it's, you gotta work. Yeah, but you have to work either way. Because if you have all the modern conveniences, then you have to work, most people have to work a set amount of hours to be able to make sure they have enough money to pay all their bills. Yeah. And they're working that most of the time away from home. Or they're at a, at a desk like this, and then later they're getting back problems, you know? Yeah, that's so, me. like, I'm, <laughs> you're gonna work either way, but I'm gonna work at home. You know, yeah, it takes me longer to wash my laundry, or it takes me longer to wash my dishes, or, you know, it takes me longer to do some of the things that need me. So I just was searching uh, Appalachia. I have an idea this is in West Virginia, but maybe not. But I believe it is, right? West Virginia, Smoky Mountains, mountains north of Georgia. Oh, this could be in a lot of states, never mind. Okay. Okay, that, that's interesting. I was just trying to, to see what's going on. Done, but I'm working at home in a peaceful environment where I want to be. You want to raise kids out here? Yes. I think the only thing I'm missing really is someone to share this life with me mm. and children to enjoy. Maybe there's a, a fine woman out there in the audience that wants to meet up with Titus one day. I don't know. How do people get in touch with you? Or you don't want to give all that information out? Ah, uh, you can put my my phone and address on there if you want. Do we? <laughs> I mean, he's, he's so famous that that would be a problem for him, I feel like. But uh, it's probably difficult for him to date, right? Because, yeah, I mean, he's so isolated that it's kind of difficult. I, I believe that, that, that he, he can find an amazing woman, but uh, probably he needs to go a bit outside of his comfort zone. You know what I mean? But um, I, I, I wish him all, all the best. I'll not do our address, but I, I would do phone. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right. But but if somebody calls, I have to leave a message because it's a landline phone. Sure. And so I'm not there at the phone very much. I have my <laughs> phone in a little shed by the house, and then I've got an Amish neighbor that helps me pay the bill, and they both use the phone. Your Amish neighbor uses the phone? Mm. Yeah. The same number? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you just leave a message, and I call you back. Yep. This is a Mennonite family. So they have power? They do, yes. Little fella mowing the lawn. You know these guys? Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh, beautiful. Oh, the, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. They, what they do you learn from that. animals? Well, I can answer that question with a story. So, I was, when I, I got Great Heart back in like 2012. And so, like he, he had never plowed before and I was just learning to plow. So I, I wasn't good at it. The horses weren't good at it. And in order to plow, you need to stay really straight. And one horse has to walk down in the furrow and the other horse has to walk up on the land. Sure. So as I was plowing, they were getting one of the horse that was, I had stand fast down in the furrow. He kept on getting out and kept on like going crooked. And I was getting so frustrated and so angry 
and I was trying to make them walk straight, but they wouldn't walk straight. Okay. And so I started, I was all by myself, and so I started yelling and screaming at them and just like whipping them, just, just without mercy. And then I felt, I felt the Holy Spirit speaking to me and say, Titus, the way that you're, if you were married, you would be treating your wife and children this way. And I said, oh, please forgive me, Father in heaven. Please forgive me. And then I felt God s s telling me, Titus, you get out of line. You don't always walk the way that you're supposed to walk. How, how do you think that it makes me feel when you are not walking in the right path that you're supposed to walk in? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, wow, that's right. So I asked God, please forgive me. And then I went to my horses and I asked them to forgive me. So horses have taught me a lot of patience. You know, you can't expect them to always do exactly what you tell them to do because maybe they don't understand. They've not done it before. Maybe they don't understand exactly what you want them to do. So Makes you learn sense. to be patient. You, you learn to take your time to teach them. And then if you're willing to put that time and that patience in, then they're willing to just serve you with their whole heart. When you say God, you get a message from God. Tell, walk me through that. What does that you mean? You like you actually hear something? It just naturally happens through your body. What do What do you mean by that? Well, like when I was saying, I felt God speaking to me, or the Holy Spirit speaking to me. I didn't hear like an audible voice, but it's this very strong thought in my mind. Okay. That I know that it's not just my own thought, because naturally in that situation I was heated up and I was angry. And all my thoughts were just frustration of how I couldn't get this job done. Yeah. And then there's this calm thought that comes from God, reasoning with me, saying, Titus, you know, you're being unreasonable with your horses. You need to take a step back. So, you know what, my friends, I, I kind of believe in this. Um, so I also, I, I grew up in a Catholic uh, home and, um, I think everyone has their own journey when it comes to, to, to religion, to, to find God. I think it's something very personal. And I think, you know, I, I, you guys may disagree, but I actually think is even if I believe in, uh, in Christ, uh, in Jesus Christ, I think it's wrong to force this into other people. But that's just my, my perspective, because I believe that... that they need to 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 find that because I grew up in a Catholic home, and um, I was going, I was doing all the the normal stuff. But my, I, I would say oh, I I did not even believe in in God. I was doing that because of my parents. But later in life, since something ended up changing on me, you know what I mean. And is uh, is talking about the Holy Spirit uh, um, of. At least I also believe, of course, it's not a voice that speaks to you. It's something inside of you that tells you that there is a, a path. There is something that you have to follow. And uh, some people may never get that, you know. And um, again, very complex topic. Uh, a lot of you guys will have different perspectives on this one. Uh, but I really believe is, um, you know, is your own journey. You know, you, you have to, to find your... Uh, your beliefs, you have to, so I, what is speaking there, I kind of relate, not that I was training a horse, by the way, but, okay, sorry, uh, uh, never mind, the story is ruined, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm joking, you guys get the point, right? In a different point, I, in a, I was in a, in a point in my life that that all of a sudden appeared, so. How, well, I, I know the answer already, but spirituality is super important for your life, right? Definitely, definitely. Like, you yes. wouldn't be able to do this without it? I wouldn't be at peace. Like, I would I would be afraid. I would be afraid that some natural disaster is going to come and a drought's going to come or, okay. you know, uh, some country's going to attack or, which that, those things could happen. But I'm at peace now knowing that I have a Father in Heaven that cares about me and that he's gonna provide what I need. So you, what's going on in society? You're not really tuning into it at all, or are you? I hear people talk about like the war between Russia and Ukraine, Russia taking over Ukraine things. I hear people talk about it and I, I am interested to know what's going on around me. Um, but there comes a point where you hear all this negative 
information, mm -hmm. and you can do nothing at all to stop it. And so, it's true. Why constantly feed yourself the negative? I agree with you know, this. Negative information is kind of like a junk food diet. You, if you're constantly giving yourself negative, 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 it'll wear you down. It'll make you sick mentally, emotionally. It'll make you sick. But there's so much positive. See this green that God made, this cool breeze that, that God made that's coming in. You know, the, the food that he gives us that's healthy, nutritious, this clean air that we breathe. There's so much positive that we can think about if we'll thank God for what he has given us it'll change our mental outlook to where we're thinking positive and then if we are healthy emotionally and mentally it will also help us to be physically healthy as well man i i agree with him 100 percent it's crazy i also believe in this and something and i don't think you need to be religious by the way to 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 do this but uh, i think something that uh, always makes me to stay, I would say, humble, is I'm very thankful for everything I have. And I'm not super rich, you know, and normal person. I have this a small community on YouTube. I'm thankful for that. I have a great family. You know, some things could be better, of course, but being thankful to have food every day, I think that's so important. And uh, oh, I agree with him a lot. Um, not sure if you guys also find this interesting, but I, I, I'm enjoying this video and uh, his perspective is amazing. It, you feel the connection. Right. You know, we could worry about things we can't control. We could worry about China taking over the United States. We could worry about Russia. That's not happening, by, by the way. Russia taking over the United States. That could happen. The Bible oh. says that the borrower is servant to the lender. So we borrowed from China. And if we borrow enough, one day we'll be China's servant. That could happen. But why should I worry about that when that's out of my control? Just trust God one day at a time. Thank him for what he has given me. And just live life. This is one of my favorite places to, to ride or drive my horse. Because there, there's like all these big trees. It's been a long time since they've logged this. so. It's really big trees, and then there's always a really cool breeze coming down. And then there's a spring. There's like spring water that comes down. Uh -huh. And sometimes I'll stop my horse and just take a, a drink right along here. On, okay. On this, uh, so a hot water. day like this, it sort of drops roughly 5, 10 degrees. Huh? Yeah, yeah, probably. Maybe more than that. Maybe more like 15 degrees. So nice. This is Ruben Troyer. Uh, he, he does like custom saddles and uh, leather work. He's a skilled craftsman. They're training horses. Training Tituses. <laughs> this guy have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of your good friends, right? Yep. And you're Schwartz and Truber Amish. Yep. And that's the reason uh, your face is blurred out because not supposed to show, but you had a story about your arm here and how you're working with it. Yes, I have, uh, I guess I've been uh, very blessed with what I still have. And how long have you had that? Since 1997. I've lived longer with this than I have had with my hands. <laughs> and accepting that the Lord has all controls was the biggest lesson. Okay. Just, just literally accepting that we don't have any control of what happens. We can accept and still go on with what we've got. So you've been mm. able to do all your farming work, and you have a, a saddle shop here, right? You yes. make saddles? Yes, saddle shop, and uh, I do some metal work as well we're overloaded, extremely busy. If I could find the right person that had the capability of doing the fine work that we do, mm -hmm. I would probably hire him right on the spot. <laughs> it's, it's hard to find workers right now? Yes, it is. Here. Sometimes you wonder. Mm -hmm. If we have leadership. Yeah. 
uh, sometimes it appears like we have none. And you Amish out here, though, you're completely self-sufficient for the most part. For the most part, yeah. So what's going on with the government doesn't really bother you so much directly, or does it? Not, not necessarily, no. no. At this point, anyway. It's right. Not, yeah. 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 I, mean, I could see a point coming where it will. If things keep going with the government as they are, uh, eventually there's going to be a point where where the Amish or, or plain people or, or whoever wants to stay faithful in their Christianity is going to be probably harshly tested. You think mm -hmm. Christianity is under threat? As of today, not really, maybe. Okay. But eventually, uh, I could see it coming where it will be. With the How true is this, my friends? Do, this, uh, I'm not American, I have no idea about this situation, but uh, do you guys think this is, uh, this is true? Oh, by the way, look, I love to react to long format content and I have, feeling, I, I have been feeling that you guys also have been enjoying those videos. I already explained a couple of times. Sometimes they don't do even that well on YouTube because YouTube likes short content instead of long content. It is what it is. But if you are watching until now, leave me the number 10. <laughs> Why the number 10? I have no idea. But leave me the number 10. And actually, if you can answer this, because uh, you guys really believe religion can be under attack in America? I, I don't have that idea. I think... Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, is the land of, of of the freedom, right? This COVID coming in, it was it was wanting to be, but they kind of backed off, not not being a threat anymore. Mm -hmm. I think we have the example of history. You know, like in Romania or China, a person could have a Bible, they could go to church, all that. But uh, then when communism came over, it was a crime to have a Bible. It was a crime to preach in the open. It was a crime to meet together for church. The government felt like, you know, Christians, their allegiance was to God first and foremost. And the, go the communists wanted their allegiance to be only to the government. This is true. That's uh, So I like to study this type of stuff. And the problem with the communism is people that have religions, they struggle a lot, you know, because, yeah, they, they want you to look at them like the, the main force. And if you believe in God, they are nothing com compared to, to what you believe, you know. Um, but um, I know I ask a lot of questions, but this one, I'm kind of curious to know your perspective. If you could give me again, leave the number 10 if you are, if you are watching. Again, we are 48 minutes in, into my video. But um, this is very, very interesting. I mean, and um, yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, we see socialism coming into... America and socialism becomes communism. You feel that more socialism coming in? Yes, there is. You're not watching TV, right? No. No. Okay, so and how do you thankfully not? <laughs> yes. So how do you <laughs> feel news. it then? Like you just hear it with the stories you tell well, with your that friends or... and, and you can tell by the mentality of the people. Mm -hmm. Since this COVID moved in, everybody just gets up tense and aggravated and no, it's kind of true. Uh, just kind of nasty. Do you guys also agree that COVID ended up messing a lot of people's mind? Because I also feel like that there is a post world after uh, that. Maybe I don't know, but um, I agree. Uh, look, I I don't even like conspiracy theories. Uh, I I don't like that at all, actually. But uh, and this is not a conspiracy theory. But you see some people saying this from time to time, and I kind of agree with this one. You know what I mean? <laughs> that uh, the world after uh, the um, the COVID situation is a bit different nowadays. I I don't know. I I, I have that that feeling also. The attitude to deal with. You notice that even out in the countryside. Oh yes. Oh yes. Everybody gets gets a little stress from it. Still, even though it's sort well, of not as much anymore, but hmm. uh, but there's still, you know, it has happened and it's in the back of your mind. You still know that eventually something different's going to come in in the same manner. 
Yeah, you can hear that blade that's still loose. So. so all your kids know how to do this. Ah, he's just starting. Oh, wow. He's uh, pretty proud of what he's able to do. <laughs> Does it make you feel proud to see him do that well, as a father? Yeah, I'm happy that he's able to, but yet there's been so many accidents with those mowers. You're still on the edge if you hear something or, you know, this or that, you're like, ah, what is he doing now? You know, right. Did he get hurt or so? But it's kind of a thing to where you kind of drill safety and then you kind of have to loosen the reins a little bit and kind of let them try it out and figure it out. <laughs> This is all your whole family, family making these. Family business, yes. And all your employees are behind me. I'm not going to turn the camera, but they're, they're making all of these. Yeah. And why are the Amish so good at craftsmanship and quality? I would say that part of it is early exposure, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, mentality, focus. That's how you were raised, right? Yes. OK. Yes. And so you raise your kids the same? Yeah. It says handcrafted yeah. by Troyer Custom Saddles. You made this for who? My youngest boy. Oh, wow. He must have been so happy. <laughs> and your right arm, you figured out how to work with that. No problem, huh? Oh, we have a few little issues, but nothing major. <laughs> there were some battles with it? I did. I struggled with my own mentality with that. But you I can believe it. This today if you had stayed in that mindset. Oh, no. No. Good on him. I had broken both my feet, and the doctors really didn't give me any hope. They said that I would probably have a limp for the rest of my life, and that I would have back trouble and hip hip trouble. Okay. And so I got really, really depressed. It was like I wanted to work, I wanted to be productive, but if I would if I would work and be and be productive, there would be too much pain, and then I wouldn't have energy. Yeah. And so I really, really struggled with that. I'm like 21 years old, but I'm, I'm walking like I'm a 90-year-old man. Like I almost, you know, I almost need a walker. It just, I, it just hurts so bad. And there's no, the doctors have given me no hope of really improvement. And I just felt like I can't keep living and go on this way. And so I, I plan to ride my horse uh, up to an area here called Green River Knob where there's a cliff and I was planning to just ride him up there, say my goodbye to my horse and just jump off the cliff. And really? Then, and then my, you know, I wouldn't have to deal with the pain and, and just all that. And I wasn't planning to tell oh, wow. anybody, what, you know, what, what was going on. I didn't tell anybody what I was going through. That was what I was planning to do. And then if it, if it hadn't been for Jesus' intervention in my life and him speaking to me on my mind, I would have just done it. One of the things that God spoke in my mind was, Titus, if you would do that, it would hurt your mother so much. And that changed the focus from me thinking about, oh, life is too hard for me to go on, to, hmm, how would this decision hurt somebody else? And so it changed my focus. And so, and then I prayed and I, I was begging God, please show me Am I going to be healed to where I can work and be functional or or not? Because I need to know. And the Lord told me, you, you will be healed. So today, there are times when I struggle with some pain in my right foot. Yeah. But for the most part, I don't have any pain. For the most part, it's, I just, it doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm able to work hard or able to go. So... That was a really a struggle that I went through. And to, to the viewers that are watching this, if you're thinking about ending your life, don't, don't do it. Yeah. There's something better. There's hope. Uh, go to your Father in heaven in prayer, and Jesus will make a way for you to go on. Yeah. I think, yeah, seek help. Uh, because there is a lot of people that don't believe in God, and they still struggle with this type of stuff. So, and... Um, Seek help. I mean, uh, talk with a friend. Talk with uh, talk with someone because there is always some light at, at the end of uh, all of this. And um, we are in all. We are together on this. You know, 
Um, life is very complex and um, I don't want to be any motivational coach right now, as you can imagine, but uh, the, 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 only, the, the only reason I'm speaking is he said go to a church or something. I, I don't think you have to do that. Even if I am a, a religious person, talk with someone, you know, talk with a friend, talk, go seek help, medical help could, could also be very important, of course. But uh, try to, to share your pain with someone and uh, people will be more uh, receptive that, than you think, most likely. Oh. Okay. Old Order Amish or Schwartz and Schuber? That's Mennonite. How do you know? Uh, by the design of the bo of the buggy. Uh, the Mennonites have like a, a square box. Okay. And they have rubber tires and they have a, a, a orange triangle on the back. Amish won't do the orange triangle? No. Uh, and the Amish buggies, their box is built at the bottoms. It goes like a, like this at the bottom. Yep. Uh, and they'll have steel wheels. So if that was an Amish buggy, it would be louder. I had no idea Kentucky was so beautiful, to be honest. I came from eastern Ooh, Kentucky. Ar this is Kentucky. Oh, I love Kentucky. Anyone watching from Kentucky? Leave me a comment, my friend. Okay, this is this is a beautiful place. Arlen County with some coal miners. That's like really deep Appalachia. Oh, I watched that video, by the way, if you are not aware. is the I believe the title is The Poorest Region in America. That video was amazing. And then down here is more rolling hills. We're sort of like on the edge of Appalachia, right? Yes. Uh, totally different feel, but equally beautiful in its own right. It's beautiful. You guys have amazing roads, by the way. Roads here are a bit... Uh, yeah, not great. The spider just caught a fly. That's one less fly to persecute my horses. You're in alliance with Mother the spiders. Nature. Yes. You guys team up? Yes. Or they help you out? They're definitely my friends. This is one of the Amish schoolhouses. Mm. And so Ruben's kids go here? Yes. There's about 12 children that go to this school. 12 kids all ages, right? Yes, yeah. And they okay. have grades one through eight. Uh, and this is the parking at an Amish schoolhouse. Oh, yes, uh, during rainy weather and things, they'll tie a horse up in there. They're storing, storing some firewood there in the one stall, but. Well, oftentimes they walk when the weather's good. That's like a three mile walk. Six miles a day. <laughs> three miles. And a big hill too. Wow. Yep. So they legitimately can say I walked yep. to school, you know, uphill three miles. <laughs> yeah. Guys, it's quite surreal out here. Such beautiful country. This is crazy. Kentucky. So peaceful, so removed, so wholesome. I get it, Titus. I'm not saying I can live it, but I, I respect it and admire it. It's definitely more Me pure too. lifestyle than most of us live. I'm really blessed to be able to live here. Really am. Come on, this is beautiful. <laughs> I like that America allows this these Stanfast, communities. And he helps me to be an amateur gymnast. And I have a lot of fun with him. So I'll show you the funnest way to mount a horse. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Oh. 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 Smooth. Yeah. And then I'll show you like <laughs> For me, this is the funnest way to dismount. <laughs> <laughs> she just cools herself yeah. down, huh? My wife will love this. <laughs> What's up? Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> it's the doggy. Yeah, he's too hot. Sorry. I, I have to relax a bit. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Along life's pathway, 
dark despair are broken hearted bow down with care i met a savior and i knew him there and he filled that longing down in my soul i searched for him but i knew not what i longed for i longed for him but i knew not what i longed for till i met jesus i knew that i would search no more he filled that longing down in my soul okay well <laughs> this is milkweed right here uh, i'm trying to let it grow up wherever i can uh, because the monarch butterfly, it's like one of the only plants that the monarch butterfly will feed on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the monarch butterfly is going extinct. Like I remember when I was little, we saw monarchs all over the place. Every summer mm -hmm. I remember seeing monarchs and now uh, they're going extinct. So uh, I'm trying to leave these to let them, give them some food and flowers. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. Homemade scarecrow? Yeah. Does this work? I tried it. I had a straw hat Not on this great. one and it worked for about a half day because the crows recognized me with a straw hat. So they stayed away for about a half day. The other one, I had a black felt hat on that one. And I only wear a felt hat in the winter time and they're not around much in the winter time. So that one didn't work at all. <laughs> and this worked for a half day. The, the crows, they want to come to non-GMO organic corn. And they, when it's about this tall, They'll come and they'll pull it out and then they'll eat that soft sprouted kernel. Is that a tick? Yes, that's a tick. That is a tick. So those are the little Lyme's disease factories, huh? My understanding is, is that the, there's a tick that has a dot on the back and the ones that has a dot on the back are the ones that carry Lyme's disease mm. and the other ticks don't. So this one doesn't have the dot on its back. We have a uh, kind of like a drive-through fast food right here. Drive-through fast food. This See? is your McDonald's drive-up window. Yep. <laughs> you just just drive by, grab it. And okay. Strawberries. Yeah, that's good. So I don't have any form of identification, like no driver's license, no ID, nothing like that. And then God called me to go preach in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was like. Okay, Father in Heaven, if you want me to go, you'll provide the transportation. So... Wait, but how is that even possible? So, he has to pay taxes. And for that, he has to be... I, I don't get it. How is that possible? I started walking from here, and like from here to Nashville, if you get a straight ride there, it's like about three hours. Okay. And I had seven different rides. And I got there in like three and a half hours. Just putting the thumb out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hitchhiking is still alive for you. Definitely. Not a Definitely. problem. At one, at one time I was going to Tennessee. Yeah. And uh, a state trooper stopped and he's, he asked me questions. And I told him where I'm going and everything. And he's like, so uh, do you have any dangerous or concealed weapons on you? And I was like, um, I have a pocket knife. Does that count? He's like, no, that doesn't count. He's like, get in. And I was sitting there and I was like, oh, no, like, what where are we going <laughs> I, I he didn't tell me what's happening you know so i'm riding along Jail. and he got on his radio <laughs> and i was like what's what's going on and so then he's like well i patrol about a 10 mile range here um he said uh so uh i'm taking you as far as my range is but i radioed ahead to tell my buddies that if they see you walking or whatever pick you up and give you a ride and i was like oh thank you mr oh, that's amazing so, so then he drops me off at this at this exit and I was standing on the ramp, you know, praying for a ride. And then this, this uh, city police shows up and he's like, are you hitchhiking? He said, hitchhiking is illegal in the state of Kentucky. And I thought, oh no, if I say, if I say no, then that's kind of like a lie. If I say no, I'm not hitchhiking. But if I say yes, then I'm incriminating myself. Oh boy. So like the Holy Spirit gave me like an answer, right, that Gosh. I needed. I said, well, officer, I am prepared timing. to walk and I'm prepared to ride. So he asked me the same question twice and I give him the same answer. And he looked me up and down and he's like, well, he's like, uh, I could uh, take you in, 
He said, uh, but you look like you're okay. You have to stay on the state highways. So I went, I was like, okay. So, but I didn't know my way. I was like, please, Father in heaven, give me a ride soon. And so then I got a ride real quick and I was gone out of there. Do you hitchhike with bare feet? In the summertime, yes. Uh, but not in the wintertime. It's, it's not healthy to go barefoot in the wintertime. No driver's license, no identification. What about social security card? I don't have one. No, I, I, my parents did establish a social security number for me, like, and the card said not valid unless signed. So I never signed it. And then I studied the issue and I, I decided to revoke my social security number. <laughs> so, oh, so is that possible? This is a wild story, my friends. This guy has no legal identity, actually. Oh, wow. But you don't exist. Yeah. Yeah, and I had a birth certificate, but uh, uh, there was a flood and it washed away. So I don't have that either. I don't exist in the eyes of the government, but I do exist in the lives of people that know me and my father in heaven. Man, this is crazy. <laughs> I mean, I love the guy, but uh, is this legal actually? <laughs> because that's the, my, now that's my question. Maybe he's illegal in America. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. I have no clue what happened to Titus. He took off somewhere out there, but I know I can call him, so let me just give it a shot here. Oh, <laughs> hello. Hello, Titus. Hey, hello, this is, Peter. This is the office. Yes. <laughs> so this is where you take all the landline calls. Yes, yeah, that's it. So <laughs> you gotta come out of the house if someone calls. Yep. So why do you have the phone out of the house? Do you uh, want the I, distraction? That's yeah, a great question. Like, if I'm studying my Bible or something, I don't want to be interrupted. I just, just I come out here to check messages, and when when it's convenient for me on my schedule, I come, and then I'm going. It is the office. This is how you get your water. Yes, I've got a little gutter on the back of this shed here, and uh, it just fills up this rain barrel, and then I just dip it out. No filter? Mm -mm, no. This is Jerusalem artichokes. Some people call them fartichokes because you have a lot of gas when you eat them. I've got corn and pumpkin and beans and you can see the the beans are climbing up the corn there. The Indians called corn, beans, and squash the three sisters because they grow really peacefully. They grow really well together. Corn needs Whoa. a lot of nitrogen. And so the beans take nitrogen out of the air and fix it into the soil where the corn can get it. The beans need something to climb on to keep them off the ground. So they, the, the corn provides support for the, the beans. And then your pumpkins or squash or melons, they vine out through there and they will shade the soil and that will help to conserve moisture and suppress the weeds. She's amazing. They're like three sisters that live well together. And this is Native American knowledge? Oh, I like that. Here's my beehive. So the, these bees here make your food way better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's key, huh, to yeah. the production here? Yeah, definitely better, better pollination. Do you ever read, Titus? Yes, I like to read my Bible, and I like to read history. Okay. What historical period or what interests you? I'm very interested to read like the history of Cuba and Europe, and how at one time they had freedom, and how one time they prospered, and then how socialism hey, and hey, communism hey, took hey, over. Hey, hey. And then... <laughs> so he basically said, when Europe was good, we are still good, my friend. What are you talking? This guy ended up comparing us with Cuba. I love this guy. What is this comparison? <laughs> I mean, maybe if he's talking about Russia or something, but uh, I mean, maybe we are, we are struggling a bit right now, but uh, comparing us with Cuba is, is going a bit... What? <laughs> okay, let's run it a bit back. And I was liking this guy so much. <laughs> What historical period like or what interests you? I'm very interested to read like the history of Cuba and Europe and how at one time they had freedom and how one time they prospered and then how socialism and communism took over 
and then how they lost their freedom. Yeah, I was reading an interesting story about a, a man in Romania that risked his life to smuggle Bibles in. And I also like to read uh, like biographies, people writing their experience, how they grew up or uh, their stories. I read a book recently um, about a man that was in the genocide with, uh, in Rwanda between mm -hmm. the Hutus and the Tutsis and how uh, he, they grabbed him and they were going to put him to death and they're like, dig your grave. So he was digging his own grave. And then he said, before I dig my own grave, uh, can I preach to you? And one of them said, no, 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 you can't preach. And the other ones, the other leader said, yeah, go ahead, preach, preach us a sermon before you die. And then as he was preaching, like he felt the Holy Spirit come on him. And then eventually they just let him go. They said, you leave, you go. So that's amazing. Like he, he wrote his whole story. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Those who do not learn from the mistakes of history are doomed to repeat them. Whose famous quote is that? That's a good question. I don't know. Do you know, Peter? No, I, I forget who said that. Barack Obama. Definitely no? true. Well, why don't we pause a minute and thank our Creator. Okay. Father, we wanted to tell you that we're so grateful that you provided this food that's so fresh and good. We ask that you would bless it and you would guide us in our thoughts and our words, our conversations. We ask that you would be here too with us. We thank you and we're asking in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I don't think I've had uh, greens to plate so quickly. Yeah. Maybe in my life, Titus. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a oh yeah, it's a short distance from that garden to here. Your kale has such a short commute. Yeah, and you don't eat meat at all, right? Nope. Eggs or mm. animal just, products? Just a plant a plant based diet. One of the reasons is because when God made Adam and Eve, He put them on a plant based diet. So, like clean meats are allowed, but it wasn't God's original intention. And another reason why is because it makes sense from a like a standpoint as a, for like being able to supply the world with food. So if we took say a cow, mm -hmm. feed it ten pounds of grain, then when we would butcher it, we would get one pound of meat back. So. Obviously, if you compare the calories value, food value between one pound of meat, one pound of grain, calorie value per pound would be a lot higher with the meat. Mm -hmm. But if you have one pound of meat over here and you have 10 pounds of grain over here, the calories in the grain is a lot higher than in the meat over here. And Albert Einstein said that I'm not quoting exactly, but the idea that he said was if everyone would go on a plant-based diet, that would save the world's starvation problem. What people put in their body is their choice, and it's not up to me to take that choice away from them. Right. I can just tell people how good I feel on a plant-based diet. And like you right. saw me That's what matters, the rope yeah. and climbing trees and everything, you know, it definitely. No, do keep doing what you're doing. It's working. It, it definitely sure. works. Yeah. And like growing up, I never had soda pop, never ate any eggs, never drank any milk. You grew up in a very religious home, right? Mm -hmm. So you've just kept it going. No. Yep. You didn't phase out of it like a lot of kids do. I grew up going to church, but I don't go to church anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, if you mean by religious, like lots of forms and lots of ceremonies. Yeah. That's not really me, but as far as like reading my Bible, going to the Bible for looking for advice or for wisdom, that's definitely, definitely me. Um, going to God in prayer, asking Him to help me, give me, me wisdom, uh, you know, that's definitely a daily thing. So wouldn't you say that the Bible is, makes life easy in the sense that it's just basically a guidebook of how to live? It's sort of like an instruction manual. Definitely. And here's what to do and here's what not to do. 
if you're someone like me who I respect the Bible, its teachings are amazing, culture in general lives off many of the principles of the Bible. Even if someone's it's not true. religious, they're living off the Ten Commandments, basically. Like, you're not supposed to steal, do one another's that you want done to you. Mm -hmm. Basic tenets mm -hmm. of society. Mm -hmm. You have it easy in the sense that that's your guidebook. Mm -hmm. I don't follow it word for word. So a lot of my compass is internal through my experience. And there's a lot of, there's some trial and error. I mean, at this age, a lot of the, a lot of things are sort of baked in, mm -hmm. right? Sort of grounded. Mm -hmm. But I do always want to be able to question things and explore things and be creative. So for me, a rigid outline is a bit daunting. Mm -hmm. And I respect, I respect the Bible. I respect religious people. And like, I, I totally get it 100%. And this would probably sound very confused to a religious person. In 10 years, I don't know exactly where I'll be. And that to me is the adventure of life. But I'll tell you what, I used to sort of look down on religion in a way. I'm like, how does someone believe a book that's uh, newer than some redwood trees in California? Because really, mm -hmm. it is. There mm -hmm. are redwood trees older than Christ. And then I did, my, actually my There's first videos I ever did were in Ukraine in the countryside and I lived with a family who were refugees basically from the a big conflict in 2014. Russian missile hits their apartment building. They moved to the countryside, had nothing. Actually living in a similar way, you're, you're, you're definitely producing more good crops they were in a drier climate, but I saw how religion kept their family together and how it was a guide. He used to be a street fighter, he was a drunk really going down the wrong he was like a bad apple in that sense wow. and then religion is the guide and he doesn't do drugs and he doesn't fight and he's very much about family and then that opened my eyes to like okay that's that's a beautiful thing these people without religion would be living much uh, much worse of a life than than with it i think that's the beauty we can hang out today we don't have to believe in exactly the same thing and we can have an awesome time mm -hmm. god definitely did create people with the power to choose. Mm, yeah. Titus, we're gonna do some creeks. By the way, I love that conversation between the, uh, between them. I, I thought it was a really cool one. Um, you shared this point. You know, I, I thought it was a really, really nice one. By dining. Yeah. And sometimes I believe that's what we miss, you know. Oh man, there is always the, the this side versus the other side. We, we are all on this together, my friends. Makes no sense for us to, to fight so much. Quite a bit cooler here than it is on the porch. Titus, you got a call. They can leave a message. So you have like a, an old school messaging machine. Mm -hmm. You ever had a cell phone? Mm -mm. Never did. You're untraceable, untrackable, Titus. <laughs> this is living life. Come on, look at that. Oh, they are eating some veggies. You know, chilling right there, talking about life. Oh, man. Oof. I, uh, the video is already ending. I mean, ending still four minutes to go, but this was a great one. And I really wonder how many people are asking until now, because if you are not, because some people just watch the first 10 minutes, I think you're not missing something. <laughs> you're oh. such a bad consumer. <laughs> Leave really, me the number 10. You're really, um, you're terrible for any marketing campaign. If they can break through to Titus, then they know they have a hit. <laughs> Somebody called me on my landline phone. Yeah. And they were trying to sell me a security system. <laughs> and <laughs> I told them, I've got a security system that works better than the one that you're selling. Um, and it's free. Would you like to, to learn about it? My Bible tells me that the angels surround his people. So I have angels that are a security system here. She's like, oh, okay. And then she hung up. <laughs> she hung up on you? I had a... This is very tasty, by the way. Thank Titus. you. Titus. Thank you. Fantastic. It's simple. It's Just simple but flavorful. See, the beauty of when you grow vegetables like this, and I'm so disconnected from it, 
everything tastes much more flavorful and vibrant and oh, yeah. better texture and you can feel your food instead of like, I got some arugula last night from the grocery store just because I was craving some greens. I ate it and it was just like this dead green. You could tell there were no nutrients in it. It was grown indoors. You know, not the same, obviously. Could have been hydroponically grown. It was, yeah. In a way, your life, you're doing everything you can. I know it's through God's will, but you're doing everything very independently. Like, you are extremely self-sufficient. Like, if the power grid goes out, or supply chains get messed with, or whatever happens, some, you know, 10x level pandemic of what we just had, um, you are like, you're fine out here for a while. Mm -hmm. So you're very much on your own, but because you believe in God, a lot of the stresses of what potentially could happen aren't necessarily yours. You don't take those on to yourself. I'm just trying to think through your thought process. Right. And therefore that gives you more of a stress-free life. Definitely. Yeah. Fair to say? Definitely. Fresh from the garden. Oh, that looks so good. Holy moly. This tree is like made for relaxing on, huh? Yeah, it is. It's it like a, contours your back. Yeah, it just, it's everything. It's like a perfect made little seat. Oh yeah, that's like childhood. Mm. Wow. This is amazing. Check that out. I planted these um, strawberries this spring. A friend of mine has a big strawberry patch. Mm -hmm. And she gave me some plants. She was thinning them out. Jesus really blessed them because like consistently I've been getting like a lot, a lot more strawberries than what I expected for the first year. And they're, they've been just super sweet, just really good. Let me ask you this. What do you think people say, let's just call it the outside, not living around here, not understand about your lifestyle or your way of looking at things? Maybe some people would be like, why would somebody want to work that hard? Okay. Or I mean, maybe that's what they, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a lot of different perspectives or maybe somebody look, from the outside looking in would be like, wow, so peaceful. I wish I could live like that. I mean, it would take some time to learn the skills, you know, um, help, eat them up, brother. And it gives you the freedom and the flexibility that like if, if your neighbor's house burns down, that you got, you got the freedom to go and just spend a few days help them rebuild. Oh, this was fantastic. Oh man, there is more videos. Revisiting Titos. Oh, should I watch this one? Man, is this a recent video? Oh, this could be good. Wait, there is a channel of him. Titus channel. Oh man, I, I have to, to do some research now. Um, but this one, my friends, so this was a tremendous video. I mean, uh, what can I say? This was amazing. Should I watch this one? Leave me a comment. You know, I, if you guys want, I will do it. No doubt. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, my friends. It really means a lot if you are spending this time with me. I mean, it is a pleasure to, to, to be totally transparent. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And that's it for today, my friends. Hope you end up enjoying this video. If that's the case, do not forget to leave a like. Also, consider to subscribe if you are new to my channel. And also, let me remember you about one thing. I have a Patreon community. I put videos there a bit earlier than I put on YouTube. So if you want to support me and have access to early content, go to my uh, Patreon. I will leave a link on my description. Take a look at that. You can also scan the QR code you'll be seeing here. And uh, that's it.